Hi everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today, and I'm tying the Bonefish Puff. Right, it's a fantastic pattern. Obviously, it's a bonefish fly, but it certainly will work for other species on the flats as well. Triggers will eat it. Trevally will eat it. I know people have caught permit on them as well. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content, the monthly fly tying meetings, and be entered into the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button. That's all appreciated. I've got my hook and my vice, it's a size 8 Gamma Katsu SL11 3H. It's a great hook. Um, nice and strong. Ideal for the flats. And I would say you can tie this smaller. I wouldn't go much bigger, maybe up to a six, but that's plenty big enough. I think of this fly essentially for tailing fish, um, skinny water. I'd go to something else if I was fishing deeper, faster current, etc. So I'm just figuring on some medium bead chain eyes and again I never put barbells on this or dumbbells it's always just bead chain and I've just got about half a shank covered with thread right. I'm just going back and forward loads of times and that's nice and tight nice and solid Turn the hook over and we're ready for the first part of the wing. And it's I'm using tan calf tail, right? So usually when you see these for sale, at Full and Miller or whatever, um it's like tan and white. The pink or orange head is the sort of norm. But you can tie these in various colours, um, dark brown, olive, tan, white, you know, change the chenille head. I believe the original was olive and blue, actually, um, for turtle grass flats, but I'm not one hundred percent sure on that. But I think that's the case. So mix and match it to suit where you're fishing, basically. Length of the wing, I like it. It's a little like a shank length behind the back of the hook, because you're standing it up. You don't need to worry about it fouling in the same way as it would. Uh, maybe if it was as long so two or three turns there just take my thread over the bead chain and catch it at the front two or three wraps then we just grab all this And I think that gives you a much more secure tie-in than trimming it over the back and cutting it. And it's a lot tidier. Just pull it up there. And also, I've filled some of this gap, which makes it a bit easier when I'm doing the... the um, chenille head. So, got a couple of strands of crystal flash. And I'm just going to tie it in two on my side. Fold it over to on your side. I'll pull it down and I'll just trim it so it's inside the wing. I don't want this sticking out beyond the calf tail. I like it in the wing. You can always remove the flash on the water if you feel the fish are spooking, but I would always put it in. Couple of grizzly hackles. I'm going to use hackles from this. Uh, this is a white and American rooster. Um, nicely marked cape. This and the the feathers are also quite a nice shape. Uh, that I like for these um, 
puffs, puffs and crabs, and then the shrimp. The, sh the the shape of the hackle, I think, is important. I don't want a pointy hackle tip like a dry fly neck. I want these round hackles. So get your length and line up the tips. Make sure they're exactly the same length. Now just strip the fluff at the bottom. And we'll tie them in one at a time. And I like these to be just slightly longer than the calf tail. Or the bulk of the calf tail. I don't mind if there's like a couple of fibres of calf tail that are reaching the hackle tip. Tie yours on your side again, curving away. Sneak it and just make sure that they're sitting exactly how you want, exactly level, same length before you tighten anything down. Uh, See that's rolling on me, so I'll just go back. Sometimes it just helps if you can rotate your vise. Perfect. Now I'm just going to do the same again. I'm going to secure this right and tight to the bead chain and bring it come to the front. We'll just tie over these stems. So I've now got this basically. You can see if I turn it that way, they're really splayed. Um which is what you know you want these hackle tips curving away so that they they move when you strip the fly. Now for the head I'm just using switch chenille or ultra chenille, velvet chenille, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same stuff. Just to build the step, the coil there, and I'm getting that tied in nice and tight. And I'll take my thread to the front. I'm going to get a wrap and I'll lift this up. And I'll take a full wrap in behind the wing. And that'll lift the wing and it'll pull the, the feathers in a wee bit but they're still splaying right they're still you can see they're still coming away from the the hook don't let the chenille twist them right you need to make sure everything's tied in nice and tight and then you just build this up figure eight through the bead chain Come to the front, I'm going to take a single turn just to so I can make the transition between the beads and the down onto the shank. Yeah, nice and tight. See how you are. I just don't quite like the way that sits, so again, I'll just go back. Just get that hard up hard up against the chenille head I'll tie it off I mean, you don't need to be that fussy um, trim that away tight and then just come to the front I'm just going to tie back Making a wee thread head. Nice and clean. And then just come in. Whip finish. Nice and tight. And another. Away the way. 
finished. Had to be some cement. Just give me that excess there. Oops, clean the eye. And you're done. Great wee pattern. So there's the bonefish puff. Quite a quick flight tie. Quite straightforward actually once you sort of get into the way of them. Deadly. Well worth having. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Take lines guys. Bye.